shocking earthquake, deep 600 kilometer quake, 4.6 magnitude in Fiji near the earth mantle. And a few hours later, three hours later, we had a 6.3 magnitude south of that in Royal Island, New Zealand. We're going to talk about what it means to have such a deep earthquake. The 6.3 was shallow at 10 kilometers depth, that's about 6 miles down, whereas the 4.6 that happened at um, 7 hours, 7 o'clock in the morning, 3 hours before the New Zealand quake, was 579.3 kilometers depth, rounded off 600 kilometers depth. And we'll go into what it means to have a deep uh, earthquake close to the mantle. The lower mantle extends from about 660 kilometers to about 2,700 kilometers. And the mantle is a layer inside our Earth, bounded below by the core of the Earth and above by the crust. Mantles are made of rocks of, or ice and are generally uh, large. Now, according to Wikipedia, of course, this is the definition of the mantle. Generally, the largest and most massive layer of the planetary body. Mantles are characteristic of planetary bodies that have undergone differentiation by density. Now, let's take a look at the quakes before we go into what it means to have something this deep. As you can see here, right under the ocean here on the left-hand side, crust from 0 to 100 kilometers thick. And under that, we have the asthenosphere and the mantle. So we're talking about this quake being a 4.6 in Fiji that is just basically at the uh, beginning of the mantle. Let's take a look at the map. Our seismo Berkeley. This is our magnitude 4.6 at 579.3 kilometers depth. As you can see, it's at 719 UTC in the morning. And this one is just north of New Zealand. It's part of New Zealand. It's about three hours later. 6.3 magnitude, it's a shallow depth, of about 10 kilometers, 6 miles. And uh, this is the location of it, 6.3. And our Fiji right here, just to so get a, a feel of where it is. Okay. And the aerial in the middle of the ocean. And if we pull out, we get an idea of where it is. Okay, the other one with this 4.6 is here. That's the deep one. And the 6.3 was around here. Now, according to a very uh, informative article on the conversation concerning these deep earthquakes by Simon Redfern, professor in Earth Sciences, University of Cambridge, on the conversation. He says, meet the earthquakes that happened six kilom 600 kilometers underground. And this is what we had just today. He says, a little more than 90 years ago, British geologist Herbert Hall Turner noticed some earthquake data that suggested a surprising explanation. The only way to explain it was if the quake had occurred hundreds of kilometers beneath the Earth's surface, instead of more commonly seen near-surface earthquakes. Since Turner's observations, deep earthquakes have fascinated seismologists. It's still unclear why they happen. But two studies just published in the journal Science, this is an article from 2013, by the way, taking different approaches conclude that they are probably a result of rapid changes in minerals at the depth. Such deep earthquakes do not have immediate consequences for humans, but they hold clues about destructive quakes in the Earth's shallow crust making it important to understand them. Not just superficial. Most earthquakes occur in the stiff, brittle outer shell that includes the Earth's crust. This seismogenic zone, which causes the most devastating and dangerous earthquakes, goes down to about 15 kilometers below the surface. But as you go deeper, pressure and temperature both increase rapidly, so the nature of earthquakes changes. Rocks move slowly, Speaking on geological timescales, 
when pushed or pulled by different forces acting on them. At depth, they appear to flow like soft toffee rather than break like peanut brittle. This is why Turner's observations of earthquakes more than 600 kilometers below the surface were puzzling. If the rocks flow slowly, then there shouldn't really be any sudden shocks that cause an earthquake. Rather, there should be gentle, continuous readjustments to stress. Suggesting Suggestions have been floated in the past about what triggers such earthquakes. But Thorn Lay of University of California, Santa Cruz, took a step ahead to analyze a deep earthquake that occurred on May 24th of the year 2013, when this article was written, in the Pacific Ocean beneath the Okhotsk Plate. At a magnitude of 8.3, it was four times greater than the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Indeed, it was the biggest ever recorded at the depth of more than 600 kilometers. A near-surface earthquake of the same magnitude could have been very destruct destructive, but at that depth it was barely noticeable at the surface above. Recent analysis of the earthquake at Bhuj, India in 2001 suggests it shared similarities to the Okhotsk event, although it was just 16 kilometers deep. In contrast, however, it caused terrible devastation, including an estimated 20,000 deaths. Quote, there may be things we don't understand about more shallow earthquakes that we can learn from studying these deep earthquakes, unquote, said Bob Myhill of University of Beirut. During the Okhotsk event, the Pacific plate of Earth's crust was drawn down into the hot mantle that makes up much of the planet's interior. So the mantle is hot. This is where, where this earthquake took place. The mantle is hot, and we know it's, it's a place of a subduction zone and also volcanic activity. There's magma under there, obviously. Now, okay, so the uh, 600, we're talking about the 600 kilometer depth. What Lay found was that the seismic energy released in the event was so large that it caused fractures as great as 180 kilometers long below the surface. The rock ruptured at close to the speed of sound, which in the rock would be as much as 14,000 kilometers per hour. But what caused such rupture, uh, rapid rupture? Alexander Chubnel of École Normale Supérieure suggests an explanation which hinges that uh, a mineral making up the deep rock called olivine could be the result, the uh, reason. To be sure, he suggested lab experiments that could mimic deep earth. Chauvenel found that above a critical temperature and pressure, olivine changes into another mineral called spinel. Under stress, this sudden change creates fractures, much like those seen in the earthquake. The middle change releases stress instantaneously in just the same way as stress was relieved in the deep earthquake under the Pacific Ocean. There is one critical difference, however. To make the experiments easier, the olivine used by Chabnel in the lab contained the element germanium instead of silicon. Germanium olivines are known to behave slightly differently than silicon olivines, and this may make a lot of difference 600 kilometers below the surface. Still, while the mini earthquakes seen in the lab were a million billion times smaller than what those uh, were on the, in the earth. The reason these experiments can be trusted is because the cracks and groans of minerals in the lab show similar characteristics as that of large earthquakes. So even though Schubnell's idea is, now, is not new, it confirms experimentally suggestions made by researchers before. It opens the way to studying deep earthquakes in the safety and comfort of the lab. You notice that he says here, that's the end of the article, but he notices it says here that uh, uh, it, it, uh, the um, experiment can be trusted because the, uh, because the cracks and groans of the minerals in the lab, G-R-O-A-N-S, groans means sound. There's cracking and there's groaning sounds because the mineral changes because of stress. It's, uh, it's amazing. So this is uh, on the conversation. And obviously, this uh, very deep earthquake of uh, close to... Oh, we just had another one as I'm talking to you. Let's go see it. Okay, we'll see that together.
Okay, this is it. It just popped up now as I'm talking to you. Five magnitude. Okay, now this is uh, about what? Uh, 10 hours later. Five magnitude against shallow. Loyalty Islands, wherever that is. Where is Loyalty Islands? Is that uh, New, York, New Zealand or is it a country by itself? I have no idea. Oh, New Caledonia. Okay. This is, um, I just spotted it. New Caledonia. Okay. Okay, there's the, there's no shake map on that. I don't see any shake map. No. Let's go see tectonics. It's right there, as you can see, right there. Obviously, that has to do with the same area that we had the other earthquakes, but it's shallow. Okay, this is the Fiji earthquake, the deep one, the uh, almost 600 at the mantle, and this was the other one uh, north of the North Island, New Zealand, right there, about uh, three hours later, 6.3 shallow, and now we have this one. Obviously, it's the same area, all right, uh, because the 6.3 is obviously pretty big and uh, we know that big earthquakes jolt other faults so and that one there that's very deep and it said that may have um a result in super in the um, more um, shallow earthquakes so it could be it could mean that uh, because of the stress there there may be a bigger quake coming i don't know we'll see but that's five five magnitude as well so I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.